Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 46 of D&D's Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realmsmith. I am your host, as usual, Jason Azevedo, and I am noticing that my camera's a little uh, high today. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but that's okay. Cameras do strange things when they sit in the studio for almost a week. Hope all is well. Uh, hope this apocalypse is treating you all right and everyone is at home, staying home, staying safe, and staying away from everyone. Hello, everyone. Gary Diamonds, Corey Ceylon. I feel like it's forever since I've seen you guys because so many crazy things have happened here um, at Realmsmith in the last week. Lots of fun, fun stuff I'd like to tell you all about. Um, and I will do real quick. Uh, of course, first of all, I want to thank Dungeons & Dragons for having us on their channel. We are live on the D&D uh, Twitch as well as the Realmsmith Twitch. I um, also want to thank Vallejo, who is our title sponsor, uh, for all the support and the help and the wonderful paints that we use on a weekly basis, as well as WizKids for the incredible miniatures that we are painting, including this Baylor, which we half painted last week and we are going to finish tonight uh thankfully we can do some um object source lighting from the weapons that he has tonight uh and we're going to be focusing on that as well um first off from WizKids, i want to show you some new um releases that they have which we're really excited about here at realmsmith we've used this stuff on stream before but this is their new warlock tiles uh system this is their tile system um, from WizKids. It's called Warlock. This is the um, Dungeon Tiles 1 set. Uh, it builds basically like a big room, dungeon room. And this is the awesome. It has this really great slip case and a carrying uh, case as well as a cover. And then inside, they have, oh, look at this cool box it comes in. And then, uh, so you can kind of carry it around. And then if I'm able to open this up on camera, it's got all these awesome tiles in it. It's got doors, it's got floors. Their floors are double-sided. So on one side, they've got the stone. Uh, don't drop it, no kidding. Uh, and on the other side, they've got wood. So really fun, exciting stuff. Um, check that out at local game stores. I believe it's launching in stores this week. And if your game stores are closed still, um, then you can probably order it from them. Uh, I believe it's shipping very, very soon. And then they also have this awesome little add-on. It's called Doors and Archways. Um, and what, what I'll do is actually I will set it up on my camera here real quick so you guys can see it a little closer. Uh, this is the Doors and Archways. It's got like cell doors. Secret doors, trap doors, double doors, porticulous door, sewer door. Lots of fun stuff. Incredible stuff from this. Um, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Take my money, Trobe says. And I'm sure uh, WizKids would be happy to bring this awesomeness to your table. So check that out from WizKids. Um, you guys want a little bit of a closer look at this set? I'll bring this kind of in, in tight here and open it up on camera. <laughs> There, check that out. Really awesome, lots of doors, lots of fun stuff from Warlock. Um, and they snap together real easy. And uh, the little uh, lock set, the little locks, the tabs that you kind of fit everything together with are actually universal with other tile sets of this type. So WizKids has been very thoughtful in that. Thank you WizKids for sending us there, setting that our way. And we will be using it in the future on stream as well. That's one announcement. Uh, if you like what you see here, consider making us your Twitch Prime subscription or your Twitch regular subscription as we love uh, to uh, you guys to help us do what we do. Um, if you do follow us, uh, this will blink purple once, and if you subscribe, it'll blink blue a bunch of times. Uh, but so you know, on Thursday, Thursday, we launched something called the Revelry within our community. What that is, is those of you that know what Wildmount is or have the Explorers to Wildmount book, um, Revelry is an organization of pirates that go along the Menagerie Coast. And we are doing Wildmount in our live stream on Monday nights. That is the adventure that we are following or the campaign set that we were following, which is the Critical Role campaign. Great way to get your Critical Role fix uh, while they are on current hiatus um, and just caring and being responsible with uh, uh, distancing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that said though, um, if you subscribe, you can become a pirate 
in the revelry if you subscribe to our Twitch channel. If you become a tier one or Twitch Prime, you become a pirate. Tier two, you become an officer. Tier three, you become a captain. That means that you get your own ship within our Discord channel, and you can head to our Discord, and you can check out all of that information, but you have to subscribe on the Realmsmith Twitch. So if you're on the D&D Twitch, hop over to Realmsmith, quickly subscribe, take a look or whatever, and then hop back on over to uh, continue to support them there. Um, but that is so fun, and it's been a blast. And as a pirate, you get the opportunity to chat in our Discord. As a captain, you can add crew to your to your thing. And then what we're going to be doing is giving away um, seats starting tomorrow to a private game with some of our cast in Wildmount. Um, and each week, we're going to be giving away one a, a position to you where you can have a Zoom adventure with some of our cast DM'd by either myself or Brandon Perkins um, in Wildmount. So fun. Uh, and that is only the beginning, folks. There are tons more stuff that you can do. As a captain, you can uh, upgrade your ships and, and all this craziness. So anyways, don't want to spend too much time on that. Want to get to painting this awesome Baylor, um, but just wanted to let you know that that's going on as well. Tomorrow night is uh, our Tides of Wildmount episode number seven. We are in the tail end of our uh, campaign uh, or adventure for this season. Uh, and then we will be back to Into the Mist in July, I believe. Um, I believe that's, yeah, somewhere in July. We're back into Into the Mist. Uh, we'll be posting more information about that soon. Also, on Tuesday night for Behind the Screen, I'm going to have James Hake. You're here to hear it here first. On the show, we will be uh, interviewing him and doing a Q&A for all of the awesomeness that he went through to create and write the Tide of Retribution adventure that we are following as the first adventure of our Tides of Wildmount campaign. Then we have the Players Table with Joel uh, Oje on Thursday, and then back to here on Sunday for another mini that we will be painting, which is very, very exciting. Going through tools real quick here, as usual, we need the uh, Baylor from uh, WizKids by WizKids. It's the Dungeons and Dragons Baylor. Um, we have, we're using a Vallejo brushes today. I am using a number two, a number one and a zero. Um, and that includes a dry brush with some water, paper towel, and a palette as usual. And then of course, for our paints, we've switched it up a, a little bit this week from last week, because now we have some room for some new paints. Um, and we've got a hype train going crazy and so many gifted tears from Dina Cole. Dina Cole just loves gifting tears. Look, not only are you gifting tears now, folks, you are gifting pirate positions within the revelry, which is so freaking fun and exciting. Um, we have bloody red, orange fire. That is going to be now. We've already finished the skin. That is going to be for the uh, OSL or the object source lighting from his weapons. Dead white will be used for some highlight areas, a uh, black wash, of course, for the wings um, and some of the other areas that we want to add some shadow. Electric blue, magic blue and blue ink will be used for his magic sword. Then we have sepia wash, bone white and leather brown for a lot of the leather areas, as well as some of the bones, the skulls and stuff. Gun metal, of course, for the metal areas. Somber gray for the base of his wings with a glorious gold on his horns for the rings on his horns and then yellow ink for the fire whip. I have moved the camera down a bit. It kind of worked. Um, and then that way you guys can see the little potion bottle that continues to kind of go off in front of me here. Uh, I am answering questions. Make sure that when you ask a question that you write question in capital letters um, in the chat and I will answer it there. Um, although I know that Shad, uh, Shadster and Prometheus Bound are our moderators. Thank you so much, as usual, for the awesome support that you give our community. They've been incredible um, there. Uh, one thing I can say, I can't say too much more after this, but those Revelry Pirates who are subscribers who are watching tonight, tomorrow we have a big announcement regarding the Revelry and some quests that might be coming up, um, which we're so pumped about. Uh, and another big announcement about a new partner that we have um, for Realmsmith. So uh, super pumped. And of course, now our captains and our, all of our revelry people, our, uh, our folks uh, in the revelry are um, gifting subs so that they can get you onto their crew. Arr. I love that so much. All right. So I'm um, getting right down here. We have the Baylor, as you can see, in all his goodness. That is what we're, as far as we got last week, we got a skin and the, the 
his skulls and stuff kind of base coated there. We're going to continue on the skulls right now. So we're going to take leather brown. Uh, oh, my camera is is caught up here. I don't know why it's, hopefully it'll catch up real soon. Um, but uh, we have leather brown. We're going to mix leather brown, there it goes, with bone white. Wi-Fi for some reason is acting up in here. So our mini cam is having a hard time communicating with our with our uh, streaming setup. That was a little too much bone white in my palette. <laughs> um, and so it's causing some issues with Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, of course, the cable company cannot send out technicians at this time. So we just got a deal until all this craziness is over. Um, but that's okay. So I'm mixing about 50-50 with the um, leather brown and the bone white. Um, thank you for the sub, I believe, or the bits. Somebody give me bits, thanks. Um, and we're going to go ahead and add kind of a mid-tone layer to all of the skulls on this awesome mini. Basically, we're leaving that heavy brown that we added before in the in the uh, in the recesses and along the edges. But now we're just adding a mid-tone kind of highlight to all of these skulls. I'll try and answer as many questions as I can as they go by really quickly. And I am trying to focus on not messing up the Baylor. So uh, forgive me if I don't get to all the questions tonight. It's been really awesome how many questions we get uh, lately on our, on our streams. Things are trucking along and our community is alive and is as alive and excited to be around as, as ever so just again thank you folks for coming along for the ride make sure to get all the skulls around his kind of bandolier area um he's got a bunch on here and then of course on his belt and on his knee pads i mean you know he's a badass when he's got skulls for knee pads. I wonder what size creature these knee pad skulls would be. Not giant sized, but they're obviously larger, maybe like orc. Not orc. Ogre skulls, maybe? It'd be about the right size for an ogre, I think. All right, so that, you can see, is done. We're also going to use that here on his tusks, which kind of come out the side of his face, these weird kind of side mouth tusks. That's what we're gonna call them. Side mouth tusks and on his teeth. And I got a little bit onto his chin, don't want that. I'm just gonna base coat his teeth with this color too, like that. Tusks on this side and his teeth on this side. Uh, and that's kind of the first highlight is done. Now we're gonna add a bit more um, bone white to these skulls um, to add more of a highlight to them. Now we're gonna go like two parts bone white to one part leather brown and we are going to focus on some of the higher up areas leaving that leather brown mix in the recesses, kind of like that. And we're just focusing on giving it a bit more detail and my camera's really um, seizing up here, folks. I apologize for that. We will sort that out as soon as we can. Thanks for another sub. Man, you guys are on it tonight. I love it. Okay, I'll get to some questions real quick. Let's see. I'm going to have to scroll way up. You guys have lots and lots of questions here, um, or lots of chatter happening anyways. Uh, welcome, Vixen, to Tier 1. Welcome to the Revelry. Uh, that is exciting. Bedtime stories with Jason, Korgik says. Um, welcome to the Revelry, uh, Los Beavis 007. We received a level 3 hype train emote that's crazy again i'm not totally sure what hype trains are but welcome blunderware welcome to the revelry this is your third month welcome d2 and d rose to the revelry 
Um, trying to find questions here. There's so much chat. Um, welcome, Iron Spider, to the Revelry. You guys are just subscribing like nuts. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you, D. Nicole, again. Um, question from Noah's Minis. I don't know if this has already been done, but could you paint a Merilith soon? I love the model and want to see you paint it. I did paint the Merilith, actually. I painted her at, um, at Origins with DM Scotty from the DM's Craft. Um, you can catch that probably on Facebook. I don't think it's on YouTube. I think it's on Facebook, but you'll have to check... Can't quite remember. Maybe somebody can let the chat know where the Merilith episode is. But we did do it live from Origins last year, um, which uh, online Origins is coming up this coming month in June, I believe. And I believe we're doing some stuff for that. So stay tuned for more news on that. All right. So I've done that. That's the base coat on the skulls. Going to also add that two-thirds bone white, one-third um, leather brown to the teeth. This is kind of the mid mid highlight, mid tone highlight, I should say. You can see how that's really starting to come out now. Um, and then finally on these skulls, we're going to take our zero brush. We're going to get 100% bone white. We're going to dilute it just a little bit, just to get it to. Um, to flow nice and easy. Small hooray for Tides of Wildbound. Thank you, Tim Russell. Appreciate that. Um, uh, let's see. Lots. Oh, here we go. Kit Motari says, can you only get the see-through effect on clear parts of the model, or is it there another way? What else do you use inks for? Uh, to make washes? Uh, so, yeah. So, um yeah, you can only Yeah, you can only get the see-through effects on areas that are the clear effects. So like for example, on him it's the whip and the sword. Um and I use inks so not only for clear effects because they remain somewhat translucent. I also use inks um for changing the col the surface color of a mini that I want to be a different shade. So say if I decide that um a color um and I've done it a couple times on stream, but say, for example, I'd rather have something that more, more of a blue, I would add a blue ink over that color to kind of shift it more in a blue direction. Blue is, uh, the blue, the inks are a great way to um, tone in a, a red, an already painted area to lean more towards a certain color palette. Um, that's what I use inks for. Um, you can make washes out of them, sure, um, but they tend to be a bit more translucent than washes are. Washes are specifically formulated to go into the recesses and stuff. So they don't work quite the same. Um, but yeah, that's what I use inks for. So I'm just going to do kind of the last third of these areas with this bone white, just to give it really nice highlight here. Uh, just the tips of the teeth. As obviously this guy would be like in the depths of Avernus kind of doing his thing. Um, okay, so those are done. I'm going to wait a little bit, and then I'm going to give that a wash with sepia wash. Um, and it's really going to age those skulls a bit more and make them look a little kind of decrepit and gross. Um, I might do the gold now. I'm going to go ahead with um, Glorious Gold, which is a really great golden color from the game color line. And I'm going to paint the little rings that are on the horns. Um, it would be better if I had my, you know what, Shad, it's crazy on here for questions. So I am going to use the, um, I am going to use Discord for that. Bring up Discord here just so I can get some of these questions from, because Shad tends to, here we go, questions for Jason. New messages, haha. -ha. Um... Corey C. Lund asks, do you have any recommendations for removing paint from a pre-painted plastic mini, specifically some of the early 2000s D&D 3.5 minis? So I don't know about pre-painted minis like that are painted in the, in the 
factory. Somebody else will have to speak to that if you know. Um, but I know Simple Green is used on minis that have been painted by people. If they want to kind of uh, repaint them, they would uh, soak them in Simple Green, and that takes all the paint off. Um, but if anybody has any experience with stripping pre-painted minis that have been painted like factory painted, uh, let me know because I don't know if Simple Green would work on those. That's a, that's a really good question. And this was way too wet, so I'm getting all this gold kind of going places I don't want it to go. So sometimes water gets stuck in the ferrule, which is the metal part, and then it tends to pool, so you just got to watch that. Make sure your brushes are dry before or not overpowered with water before you use them and dip them further. Okay. I'm pretty sure I did have um, the monster manual with the Baylor in it. Uh, let's take a look because he's under devils. I know that for sure. Um, demons. He's a demon, not a devil. Baylor, here it is. Oh, awesome. What a, what a great image. Uh, and it looks like he has a, a thicker ring and then a smaller ring. So we're going to go with that. Maybe I'll move him over just a little bit just so I can see what's going on here. Baylors are so crazy cool and have been used in more places than just Dungeons and Dragons. If you remember correctly, there was a Balrog I was talking about last week in the Lord of the Rings series of books and movies. Reminds me very much of the Baylor. So I'm just going to add a second one here. This is really the only gold on the mini in my head that I want to add. I mean, you could you could make his all of his uh, kind of metal areas gold if you wanted to, but I just want the two rings there to be this color. I think he also has a ring um, closer to his head too. I'm going to make that one gold as well. Why not? Why not? Um, uh, Iron Spider says, Hi, Jason. First time live viewer here. Just finishing the Young Red Dragon and got the Gargantuan White to start. Would you just use the same color scheme as the Young White? So, yes, except that I do, when I paint my Young Dragons, I take into consideration the fact that they're a little younger and in the Monster Manual, it talks about how how the color uh, the the coloring um, or the color scheme on young dragons differs from older dragons, so I would use that same scheme considering the differences because it says that like um, on on a lot of older dragons they'll go um, their eyes will change to a pure kind of color. For example, on a metallic, um, it'll change to pure kind of gold uh, orbs instead of um, what they are when they're younger. So I would check that out. Make sure, uh, or, or take that into consideration and adjust as necessary. So that is the gold rings on there. The skulls are now dry, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a sepia wash. Again, for those of you that are new to painting, washes are great for adding depth to a miniature. We're just going to water that down just a touch because we don't want it to be too thick. We don't want to obscure the color that we use. We just want to tone it a bit, right? So washes, again, this is going to seep into the crevices. It's going to kind of age these skulls a bit so they look a little bit more. And I'm going to push it away from the center so that we don't lose the highlights we did. But it is going to kind of model the skull a bit and make it look kind of worn and old. It's going to end. Oh, and they'll just drop the bail But the nice thing about WizKids Minis is they don't shatter. Imagine that. They're very resilient. Again, I just want to shout out a huge shout out to our mods. As I ask, as I answer questions here, our mods are actually striking them out in our Discord so that I know I asked them. They have been so amazing. Um, and they actually appear in character on our Discord channel um, to chat with our and give information to our pirates. Um, 
on the, on the dark toad chat. So like just a huge huzzah to our, to our mods, uh, Prometheus bound and Shadster. They're so, so great at what they do. And I'm so, so thankful for them on a, on a daily basis. They are so active and they're just there to help you folks out. Love it. All right. I think that's all I'm going to do for the skulls. They look really cool, kind of aged. You can see how that has kind of brought out those colors. I'm going to go ahead and use um, dead white on the hair. I want his hair to be just this shock of, of white. Um, and so I'm going to go straight into it. I am going to um, dilute it a little bit so that it flows really nice. Um, we got another sub there, I believe. Oh, no, that was... Um, that was bits. Thank you. Um, question from Dan Robotman. Good God, you're talented, Jason. I'm envious at the least. Thank you, Dan Robotman. I appreciate it. Um, but <coughs> what I do uh, for, for miniature painting is actually quite simple. I just follow certain steps and certain techniques. I wouldn't consider myself like a, like a stellar, crazy studio painter. Um, a lot of the things I do are actually quite basic. I'm actually adding just a little bit of dead white to the to the tips of some of these areas, just so these teeth look really sharp and nasty. Um, but uh, but yeah, I uh, I just follow the techniques that I've learned from a number of different kind of uh, miniature painting worlds and tech and tutorials and stuff that I've caught over the years. Um, and it's not you know all of y'all can all of y'all. That's not Canadian. Um, all of you can follow them and get to the same level. I have no doubt. And I've seen some of your your creations. Please, folks, if you um, are painting and you want to show off your stuff, please post in our Discord channel. Um, that We do have a painting channel that you can post all your creations with. Um, and I'd love to see them as you folks kind of paint and create. Makes me so happy to see all of them people post all the time we've been getting like we've been getting um fan art in our in our discord channel we have a fan art channel it's nuts the craziest part about this whole revelry thing is we have people literally um we have hundreds of people role playing i want to say hundreds the ability for hundreds i don't know how many there are exactly but we have lots and lots of people um role-playing in pirate speak on our discord as pirates and and creating because we've um we've added avre which is the uh dnd discord bot to the channel they're actually like rolling scores and role-playing in our channel i'm playing dnd in our discord um it's so freaking cool and it's it's really inspired us to take this whole thing to the next level and and provide you folks some fun stuff um, that we'll be announcing tomorrow night in our stream. So, okay. So I think, I don't want to do much more than that, but that looks pretty good from a hair perspective. I don't know if I want to add more to that. I think I like how kind of stark that looks. I love the stark kind of contrast between the white hair and the red skin and the, the general kind of darkness of this miniature. Just going to hit the edges again a little bit so they really stick out so cool all right might add a black wash around the edge to kind of set, differentiate it a little bit but for right now that looks that looks badass i am gonna maybe add a little bit of um dead white to some bone white and highlight a couple of these skulls just on the edge so we're gonna do like the the bridges of the nose the brow here a little too wet and same thing that was happening before where we're getting a little bit of water seeping down. But you want to get like the, the, the eye socket on the bottom where the lights would hit. Like that. Too much in the eye there. That's kind of seeped into the eye. I don't want that. So I just get an unused brush. And I pull that out. These skulls are so cool. 
just around the bridge of the skull here. These little skulls, just a little bit. There we go. Ha ha! All right, don't want to get too carried away. All right, next, inks take a while to dry. So I'm going to, I think, tackle the inks next. I'm gonna take a, a brush that has seen better days a little bit, one that I've used a lot. It's got a, it's got a, the tip of the brush, which tends to happen with synthetics, has kind of bent a little bit. So I'm gonna use that brush to number two to add the inks to the weapons um, here because that's gonna take a little while to dry and we want to add effects and build on them. So. I'm just going to go ahead and create kind of the base coat of this. I'm going to take ink, add a tiny bit of water, and we're just going to brush it onto the lightning sword that he has here. Um, I'm finding if I add too much water, it doesn't really adhere. So I'm just kind of judging as I go. And then we're going to paint this in a bit to give it this really cool kind of glowing effect. But you can see I'm just basically glazing that sword with that blue. Doesn't look all that kind of strong yet, but as soon as I do the other side as well, you'll see how you'll see how that works really nicely. It still remains transparent, but a blue tinge. Look at that. Cool, right? And then we're gonna go in there and do even more to it. But that was just kind of the beginning of we go so cool then so that's the blue ink we're going to use on that and then we're going to use yellow ink on the flame whip here and basically same as same as the blue we're just going to paint this in to all of the recesses and all the areas like that. Just gonna go along kind of the entirety of the length of the whip. Making sure not to get it on the mini, but making sure to saturate it enough so that it takes the color of the ink. And you can see that happening nicely, really nicely actually. And then we're gonna do some dry brushing with some orange and some yellow, some orange and some red, sorry, to really bring out the, the kind of the flame look. But this is just the base of the effect, like that, there. Okay, and we're just gonna leave that like that for now. Let that dry. Probably use some more up in here. Crazy cool what that does to the miniature, just on its own. Crazy cool. Okay. Let's look at another question here. From Tim or Saul says, I have some problems with keeping myself interested in painting minis during the epidemic. We went online with my group and creating a good setup for online mini-based gaming is a pain. Any tips to keep on painting? Um... My biggest, even outside of a pandemic, my biggest way to kind of motivate myself to continue painting is it's a pain in the butt to continue to set up a painting area. If you, if you don't have an area that's kind of set up permanently, then you have to like tear down and put it back. And for me, that was always really difficult and always kept me from painting more than I wanted to. Um, and so what I've decided to do instead is I've decided to, I set up a hobby area in the basement, in the corner, in my, in my office. Um, I have an area that's always set up so I can put my mini down, sit down, do a little bit, step away, come back. And that really helps me to keep motivated and keep painting is to have kind of a designated area, even if it's small, where I can continue to paint. Uh, that was always important to me. Okay, so I'm gonna do the eyes here. The water's coming down from the ferrule as usual, tends to happen. And I am going to just dot the eye in here with dead white. I'm just going to paint just like that. So in the, in the art, in the monster manual, and um, on the back of the 
the box for the miniature, they had um, they had kind of these flaming eyes, almost like the flame from within is is coming through their eye sockets and their mouth. So I'm gonna do that here. Just paint eye into the eye socket, white into the eye socket like that. And then I'm gonna add some yellow ink in there and that should kind of make it look flaming a little bit. I'm also gonna paint dead white into the back of the throat, the back of the mouth I should say. Um, and then again, make it look like kind of there's flame coming out. Uh, his tongue too actually, I'm gonna go in here painted white as well and then I'll add some more colors to make it sort of blend um, again making it look like it's on fire in there and he's just waiting to like just like flame is coming out of his mouth once that's dry we'll add that white ink or that yellow ink white ink that yellow ink okay um, while that's drying there and the ink is drying, which shouldn't take too long, it's almost just a little tacky, but it's it's getting there. Um, I am going to go ahead and get some leather brown. Now with leather brown, I think I still have some in my palette. I do. With my number two brush, that's the better brush. Um, has a better tip on it, just a little newer. I'm going to go ahead and start to highlight some of this, some of his garments in the middle. I'm just picking out with it kind of a thinner um mix of leather brown just bringing in some of these highlights here like that now it looks strong um but i'm then going to do a wash with sepia wash and that will uh, bring it down a little bit in intensity um we don't have the heavy sienna left on this palette so i'm showing you how to kind of blend it without having to blend up through colors. I try and limit myself a little bit to show you how to get creative with your blending. Um, Dag Crystal says, um, I want to paint my tiger body purple and blue kind of camo mixed blended. How can I, how would I do that? Um, anytime I'm painting camo, I've done it a couple times in my painting history. Uh, especially with wargaming and stuff. And uh, I would just look at different pa camo patterns uh, online. Uh, and usually you can kind of figure out um, what shapes kind of work across your miniature um, in different areas. And I would, I would reference and study some camo patterns in order to do that because um, there's so many different kinds. So just deciding kind of what do I want it to look like. Um, and then choose one that you like, and then just pick the colors. Usually it's made of like three or four colors. A camo pattern typically is. Um, okay, so I think that's all I'm gonna do there for the garments, and then I'm gonna add a sepia wash, and that's gonna kind of blend them together a bit more than it currently is. All right, um, now that that white is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and get some yellow ink and just dot it inside the eye and that'll make it look like it's more on fire than just kind of a yellow eyeball. I'm also gonna drop that ink into the mouth and that should colorize the back of the throat a little bit. And once that dries there, again, I'm gonna use some reds and oranges to make it look cool. Um, that's that. I think I'm almost ready. Um, to get to the wings, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I think I will get to the wings next. The inks are actually almost dry. So let's base coat those wings. For the wings, I chose somber gray, which is one of my favorite, that is gunmetal. This is somber gray, one of my favorite gray colors within the Vallejo line. Very cool, kind of darker, bluish smoky gray. Corey C. Lund has a comment. I've had one soaking in simple green for 24 plus hours now. Still doesn't look like anything has happened. Yeah, it's it's difficult to, uh, I think, strip the uh, the um, factory versions because of the process that they use to add the paint maybe. 
Um, not sure that's going to work very well for you guys. So uh, I'm, uh, I would suggest if you want to repaint a, a factory painted mini, not one that you've painted yourself, I would just, um, I wouldn't strip it. I would just uh, prime it and repaint it as long as it hasn't lost too much detail with the paint. But yeah, this, this color is always a favorite of mine. We're going to use this as a base coat, and then we're going to go ahead and wash it. Thank you for the sub. Vixen, again, adding more pirates to the revelry. I love it. Okay. Um, comment from the D&D chat from Juliebug. Um, oh, man, this looks awesome. Thanks. Thank you very much. Very simple techniques. Super, super simple. Anyone can do them. They're very easy. That's what we try to do here. We don't want to complicate it too much. Um, Dan Robot says, um, will this guy be a returning character in the campaign, the reason for the detail and time spent? Or should I ask that on behind the screen? Apologies. If this was mentioned, no, Dan Rowe, but man, actually, that's a really good point, right? So some minis uh, take a little longer because of the immensity and the detail. So this Baylor has a lot of things going on, right? So usually in a two-hour session, I don't paint magic items, and he had a lot of colors, and I couldn't even fit all the colors I need for him on one palette, which tells you how it differs from a lot of the characters that I do on the show. I usually can fit all of their colors in one palette, Um into like 10 to 14 colors usually. Um, now he, so he required a little bit longer. Um, I could have kind of gone through him in two hours, but I wanted also to make him a bit more, he's a bit more epic. And then at the end of the last session, so, or sometime at some point in the last session, uh, last episode, somebody had asked if we can do um, kind of, if I was going to add reflected light from his weapons onto his body and i was like you know what if i take a bit more time on this then uh maybe i can show you guys how to do that people have been asking how to do reflected light on magic weapons so i figured you know what why not take the time make it a two-parter and show you folks how to do that the other thing too is, is i wanted to take a bit more time on the skin i wanted to be brushed on but i could have dry brushed that that skin on in a fraction of the time so if I wanted to get through this quickly, I could have just dry brushed that red skin um, with, you know, v uh, varying degrees of, of oranges and reds and then, and then been done as well. So I decided to take a bit of the long route, not because of my campaign. He may show up, he may not, but Baylor is a really high level, high CR um, that is um, challenge rating creatures in Dungeons and Dragons. So... Uh, it usually takes a little bit longer to get to fight one of these. So chances of him showing up are fairly slim, at least for a long time. But he's a cool mini, so I wanted to spend a bit more time. From the D&D chat, we have a pink floppy foosh. <laughs> it's a great name. I don't know if you've answered this question already, but what is the biggest project you've ever worked on, painting or just in general? Um, that's a good question. Uh I think painting wise, um, the I spent the most time on the Frost Giant Mini, I think. Either him or the Beholder, not sure. Both of those are on our channel if you want to check that out. Um, that was a big project. I think that the other kind of biggest project for Realmsmith probably was either the table I built. So I, the, the table I paint out here and the table that we, we, we play on, I built from, from scratch. Uh, that was big, or even perhaps the, um, and that was, took a little longer than the facades that you see behind me. Behind me, these wall things that look like kind of a Tudor, ta Tudor tavern, um, Joel and I built together, and those, you know, took some time. So those are probably two other big projects that took quite a bit of time and resources, but paid off in the end of very happy with the way our studio looks so it was definitely worth it there's something about playing at a table you built 
that really adds a lot to, for me, to the experience and the sense of accomplishment. And yes, I did record the tutorial for the table. And yes, we will post it at some time soon. I get that question a lot. Um, and we will be posting it at some point. But things are busy here at Realm Smith, So we're trying to figure out and trying to kind of prioritize, make sure that we catch everything. So that is one wing base coated. On to the next. Korgek asks, good evening, Jay. How are you? I am well, thank you. I'm the dreaded and former Romores guy. I know. <laughs> My question is not strictly related to painting minis. We finished playing Dragon Heist yesterday. And next Friday, I will start as DM Curse of Strahd. Ha ha ha. I like where this question is going. Let me, uh, let me guess. You're going to find out how to kill your characters as quick as possible in Curse of Strahd. My answer is just play it the way it is. I'm kidding. Um, I've already devoured all the Into the Mist episodes, but do you have any advice for me as I venture into the mists of Barovia? Thanks. Yes, 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 I do. First off, um, I say this often about Curse of Strahd and about D D uh, DMing in general, and that is that your players can only follow the, the um, hooks that you give them. They can only choose the options that are available to them, usually, from, from a plot perspective. Something going on here. Lots of craziness happening on our... Somebody just did something. Sheza is now hosting us. Thank you, Sheza. Was that why our thing just went nuts? I think so. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so... You know, there, uh, Curse of Strahd is such a um, sandbox type adventure. Um, when you get to uh, the town of Vallaki, everything goes and spider webs, and there are tons of options that are available to the players. So, as a DM, depending on how you want to prep, I, I personally did not have the time to um, like spend preparing every single possibility within Curse of Strahd. I just don't have that kind of time, and I'm sure most people out there don't have that kind of time. So I just prepared a bunch of options that I thought the players would may want to kind of follow or came out of what they had done already that were a natural kind of progression. Prep enough so that they feel like they're making choices, but not too much that you're overwhelmed uh, as a DM from a prep perspective. Um, so that's my first one. The second one is there's lots of... YouTube channels out there that talk about ways to, to change or uh, make certain areas uh, or certain encounters and storylines uh, more enticing or less challenging or more narrative from Chris of Strahd. So I would definitely do that. Look up, you know, Chris of Strahd on YouTube. There's lots of helpful um, things out there when it comes to even when it comes to like um, walkthroughs and understanding the whole story. Uh, of, of the way that things go and the way that things should work and fit together. Um, that was a huge help to me was just watching YouTube videos on other people who have run Curse of Strahd. Um, and not, not necessarily streams, but although streams are great, um, just like instructional videos and informational videos on Curse of Strahd was really great. And I actually added a bunch of those into our, into our season, last season of Into the Mist. And for those of you that don't know, we have a, a live stream season for Curse of Strahd called, called Into the Mist that you can find on the D&D and Realm Smith YouTube channels that you can follow. Uh, there's 13 episodes there. Uh, the finale, um, I'm not going to ruin it, but somebody very notable from our industry, some would say the most notable, um, played Strahd in our finale. Um, so you can check that out. All right, I love that. I can just go on my on my phone here and get the questions because our moderators are awesome. Um, let's see. Comment from Ket Matari. That l ink treatment looks awesome. I have some water weirds to paint, and I think the blue ink will 
work really well. Absolutely. I did uh, a water um, elemental along with, I painted all four elementals in two hours, uh, one, one episode. Um, and I mixed blue and green ink at different intervals, and it really makes it look natural, kind of like a wave of water. So uh, take a look at that and consider that. Um, and then I dry brushed it and then used snow effects for the cap of the wave uh, at the top of the elemental. So it looked like a big wave kind of coming at the characters. Really neat. Um, hard to get into this inside of this wing here. So I'm going to have to turn him into all kinds of uncomfortable positions here to try and there we go. Get my brush in here. Sometimes you have to get very creative with the angle that you paint at for some of these minis. They're so detailed and have such dynamic poses, poses sometimes that it's tough to get all the nooks and crannies. There we go. Could have used a larger brush for this area, but I just wanted to, I don't know. I love my number two brushes, so I use those the most. Um, Noah's Mini says, question, are they the door sets you showed at the top of the show already available, or is it just to show them off before release? Good question. I believe they're releasing this month, uh, but you'll have to maybe go to the WizKids website um, or check with your local store to find out if they're out already. I don't think they're out already. I do believe they've been ordered to stores. I don't know for sure. That is a question I will get an answer from from WizKids for you. Um, but uh, but I know that they are imminent. Which is why they sent me some to show off in the box. Some final copies. Okay, so those are the wings. Going to let those dry. Uh, we're going to get to these cool magic weapons real quick. Um, Noah's Mini says, I personally don't like the translucent plastic and thus I want to paint them with the opaque paints. Does that translucent plastic hold paint or do I need to pre-prime the mini before painting? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I've painted over them before and it seems fine. Um, you could use a brush on primer on those areas if you don't like the uh, translucent areas. I personally like the translucency. Um, so I prefer to leave them as is and use inks, but um, it's totally up to you. But yeah, I, I, I would suggest adding some, I wouldn't pre-prime the whole thing, but I would use some brush on primer in order to kind of make that work. Um, orange fire for the fire whip. We're just going to put some of that into our palette. Comment from Ket Matari again. Oh, cool use of the ink, referring to the inks in the eyes. It's a good way, right? There's lots of little little tips and tricks for different methods of doing things, but you can see the eyes have a little yellow in them um, just to kind of give that flame effect. The eye's so small, there's only so much you can do. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I did forget to get a smaller dry brush. I may just call my son to grab one. Because um, I do need a smaller dry brush for this. Because this one is going to be way too large for doing what I want to do here. He's so helpful. What a good kid. Uh, okay, these wings are getting there. Can you grab my mini holder too, please, son? Thank you. I'm getting old, my hands. I'm getting old. Um, before that, then, I'm going to start on the um, blue area. Um, thank you. You're the best. I use this little holder because it really... Uh, does it fit? I thought it did fit in here. Maybe it doesn't. It doesn't fit. I thought it did. Oh, well, it's fine. It's large enough that it's not an issue. Um, okay, so back to orange fire, actually. Okay, so basically for dry brushing, 
Uh, for those of you that don't know, we add some brush to, we load our brush and then we wipe most of it off on a paper towel until almost there's nothing left that's coming off. And then I'm gonna dry brush this whip. Now sometimes you uh, not enough paint comes off, so you have to kind of judge. But here you can see I'm doing a bit of an overbrush. Overbrush is just a, a more wet dry brush. Um, I'm just gonna do an overbrush over this because fire gets more red further from the center. So we're keeping the yellow in the center where it's hottest and we are dry brushing kind of around it to add kind of a flame effect. Uh, and this overbrush that I'm doing, we don't do it too much because we still want it to be transparent. We still want the light to pass through it, but we're just dry brushing it like that. Doing a decent dry brush. We do not want it to go into the recesses. We want the yellow ink to stay in the recesses. We do want this to sit kind of on the peaks of this, like that. Keep hitting this camera here. It's kind of in my way. Okay, there. So you can see it's starting to get kind of a bit of a flame effect there. We're gonna stop that there. And then last step on that, on that flame whip is we're gonna use some bloody red. Some bloody red. And we are going to wipe it off there. And we are going to just now focus on the top where the flame peaks the most. Not on the bottom, just on the top. Like that. And I would take it even a step further. If I had some black, I would add some black to the very top where it's starting to get, or even some deeper red. You could go multiple levels on this um, where it's starting to turn into smoke kind of, but we don't have black in our palette, so we're not gonna do that. But anyways, or like even like a brown color sometimes works, but this is working just like I'd like it to. And we're just focusing on the very tips of where the flames kind of peak. There we go. Oh yeah. Um, from the D&D chat, Elif Null 01. Have you thought about what you wanna do for the base? Will you add anything to it? Probably not. Uh, maybe I'll add some grass tufts potentially, but he's in probably the pit of hell. So um, you could do like a cool um, lava kind of base with some of these cracks uh, ending in lava, uh, but I'm, I usually don't pay too much attention. I probably won't even do the base this session actually, but you can take a look at when I post it on our Instagram later, um, which is often quite delayed. I apologize for that folks, but yeah. But you can see again, the light passes through that flame, but we've got a bit of a flame effect going on for that whip. Now I'm gonna take um, electric blue for the sword. And you can see from the monster manual, the sword had this like, uh, almost like a white core, like a, like a, a hot white core. Dragons, devils are this way. I should probably put a little, there it is. You can see that it's got this Basically, the sword is so crackling with energy in the middle that it's white closer to the tip and in the center. We're going to kind of try and emulate that look um, here um, on the Baylor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, again, electric blue. Actually, I'm going to take magic blue first, which is this one. Fitting for a magical weapon. Uh, I'm going to take my... Number two brush. And I'm gonna paint the, from the tip of the sword, almost the entire center of it like this. I'm just adding a, basically like a stripe down the center, kind of leaving the edge of the sword with that sort of blue ink, because we want it to be kind of 
don't want it to be opaque, just the center. We want to kind of make it look a little bit like it's glowing white with energy, with lightning energy, which is what the sword actually has, like that. So I'm also going to do it down here on the kind of the, the guard area and on the pommel as well a little bit, leaving kind of the lightning that comes off it. I'm just going to kind of run it up a little bit close to where it connects like that. Then I'm going to mix some electric blue in with that magic blue, but mostly electric blue to kind of create a even um, lighter area kind of in the middle of that area we've already kind of delineated. So carefully, I'm gonna start up here and just down the center, like that. Not covering all of that magic blue, just focusing on the center, having some of these lightning areas kind of come off it like that. that and then the other side as well like that have it come off the side kind of like that And then I'm going to have pure electric blue in the center of that. And you can see how it's starting to kind of blend and look more and more magical. Sometimes I have to put my brush at weird, weird angles to make it work, but it works. So the electric blue at the center of that. And then I'm going to mix. This is when it starts to get real crazy. Mix a little bit of, I say 50-50 electric blue and dead white. And then I decide kind of how wide I want this to be, but I want it to kind of take up the center here so it looks, like I said, white hot with energy. That's the sound it makes, apparently. Just a dot there and a little bit in the middle here. And uh, I'm going to take my zero brush and just paint these electric kind of offshoot branches or whatever you want to call them off there that come off just follow it over a bit just so it looks like a little bit of lightning I can even you can even push it a little further if you want kind of like that crazy right just a little simple technique makes them kind of look like they're Alive, they're alive. All right. Like that, and then pure bone white in the center. 
And this is going to be just down the center of this thing. I'm going to get the edge to down the center. And you've got a crazy electric sword. Yeah, I hope my players don't have to face one of these soon. Jeez, I'd be really mean if that was the case. Here we go. Okay, wings are uh, dry, so now I'm going to add my black wash to those wings. And then we can add our little magic effects to them, because pretty much at this point, he's almost done. Except, I did say I was going to use orange fire, and I'm going to paint it onto the tongue here. Um, like that. I'm actually going to leave it orange like that, and then... There we go. Cool. That turned out really nicely. Um, Follow-up question from Plink Floppy Foosh. Um, that is a good question. And to add on to that question, have you ever added other elements to your bases like sand, fake grass, etc.? I've done all of that stuff, especially in my wargaming days. I don't add static grass too much to my um, D&D minis. Um, again, just uh, value of how long they're on the table for at any given time. Um, but I, I have been adding uh, grass tufts to miniatures uh, bases lately. Um, I do, I got, Vallejo is releasing uh, a series of grass tufts. They look really super awesome. And so I've absolutely been adding them lately. Um, I can't reach my shark abominations that I had on the stream, but if you watch the stream uh, tomorrow night, uh, you'll see the bases or the, the tufts that I've used on there. They're really cool. So, okay. Here we go. Just adding a black wash. Now, I'm going fairly heavy with this wash. I don't mind it being thick because I do want these wings to be kind of darker than gray. I don't want them to be gray. I want them to be like a dark, or I don't want to be just like, anyways, I want them dark them fairly significantly. Um, because the color of the wings kind of in the, in the source material, they're actually quite dark. So I'm not going to be light. I'm just going to kind of go through them. I'm diluting, diluting just a touch, but just a drop basically of water added to this wash. And you can see how it's darkening the wings quite nicely on the inside. Go to the outside here. And again, with washes, I am just adding it to the miniature and then manipulating it and moving it into recesses. That is the best use of a wash so that it looks natural in the areas that it goes. Nora Ibrahim will be joining us again as Diarco tomorrow night in tomorrow night's stream on the tides of Wildmount. And I'm not afraid to add a little bit of black wash in between the hair and the and the wing there to add a little bit of bit more delineation. I'm not even sure I'm going to highlight these wings. I may just leave them kind of, depending on how they look in the end, um, I may just leave them a little bit, maybe a little bit of a highlight. I guess it's sacrilege not to. Um, comment from Tam Good says, Jason, you have started something epic, having a blast in the Discord channel and playing a pirate. You're very welcome. Thank you for saying so. And, you know, we uh, love to get your support. We need your support to continue doing what we're doing, especially during this time. Really helps. And But instead of just giving us money, we want to provide an experience for our viewers. And this is one way to do it, to give back a little bit and give you value for your uh, subscription and the perks that should come with being a subscriber. So that's our way of doing it, is to make you part of our community. And what I didn't, haven't really said before, um, but we'll say kind of officially tonight, is that the 
things that the Revelry Pirates in our stream take kind of part in, the side quests and things like that, um, and the even the private game quest will actually affect the timeline and the story of our stream. So what you do, what you do in life will echo in the afterlife. No, what you do in our uh, Discord life and as a Revelry Pirate will echo in our live stream, which is super cool. I don't know if that's ever been done before, but uh, the idea that your actions will affect our game is pretty epic of a, of a concept, which again, I think is fairly new to Dungeons and Dragons on Twitch um, and in, in streaming. So we've always, like I said, wanted to make this an interactive stream. I don't know why the camera again is paused up here, but it is. I may have to just, unless it goes back real quick, I may have to just reset the camera here real quick. There we go. Sorry about that. Don't know why that's happening to my Wi-Fi. And my internet provider also does not know. And they can't come here to check it out. So we just got a deal. It's a lot of that. A lot of that right now. Just dealing. Just got a deal with it for now. Oh, man. Oh, digging that sword. That turned out all right. Turned out all right. Okay, so we're just going to let that wash dry for a second. Go back to some questions here. Let's see if I can catch up on some questions. Um, comment from the D&D chat. If Simple Green doesn't do the job, try soaking it in Detol instead. Okay, cool. D. Nicole says, what helps you choose between different types of browns or grays or blues? Is it what you see in the manual or personal choice? A bit of both. I st stay true to the manual as much as I can, but I adjust based on personal preference uh, as well. Um, S. Good Kai says, I've loved watching Realm Smith grow since I discovered you last August. You are an awesome group of folks. Thank you. Dab1800, uh, which I think is the first time I've seen you, Dab. Uh, in the White Plume Mountain Adventure, have you seen any PC use the Ring of Mental Immunity for crustaceans only, whether in some RP cast or something else? I haven't run White Plume, so I haven't seen that. But maybe somebody in the in I would actually ask that in our Discord channel. That'd be a great way to do it. Um... Ket Matari, question. Ah, good idea on the green inks. Thanks, Jason. How does the snow effect work? It's Vallejo? Yes. Uh, if you look back at our uh, elemental um, tutorial, there uh, we use the, the snow in there, and you can see how, how we applied it. From the D&D chat, uh, LF Null 01 says, do you think you're better at painting minis versus larger size statues because of your experience? Um, I like painting larger minis because you have, like on these, for example, because you have... Um, the ability to uh, do more detail work. Smaller minis, smaller area, of course, so that just makes sense. Kind of goes without saying. But, um, but yeah, I'd say that, you know, painting a mini actually makes me better at painting these because then your strokes get smaller, your detail gets smaller, and then when doing it on here, it actually shows better. Um, he's coming along nicely, I think. I am going to take some gunmetal again. And we are doing good for time, folks. Gonna save like the last half hour or so for those effects. So I'm just gonna take a little gun metal here and I'm just going to highlight some of the metal areas that um, I washed last time. Just going to give it a bit more, make them come out a bit more. Um, kind of over brush and run the edge of my brush along some of the chains because with the wash, washes go, uh, finish matte have a matte finish to them. So you kind of have to make that metal pop again. So I'm just running the side of my brush along the chains, for example, to bring that metal out again on his chest so we can actually see it. Um, also going to run and create a little bit of a highlight along the edges of the boots. I'm basically just going around all kind of the edges here and adding some highlights with this metal. 
I don't mind the metal here feeling grungy. I imagine it would be. Oh, geez, just attacking the mini with my brush here. Not good. But I'm just highlighting some of these metal areas to bring that sheen back. Not the Charlie sheen. That was a bad joke. Man, me and my dad jokes. I have found that my dad jokes get worse the longer we're in quarantine. Anybody else notice that? I think I'm just reaching for some <laughs> humor and it tends to, that tends to happen. Okay, so. I don't know if I wanna do much more metal on here. I kinda like that it's grungy. Just want to add a little bit more and bring that, bring that luster back. Perfect. Haha. -ha. Okay. Um, those wings are still drying. I am gonna add a little sepia wash again. It's still wet in my palette, which is nice. Just add a little bit of water here. I'm gonna add, mentioned adding sepia wash to the leather areas. I'm gonna do that real quick. And you can see that that's really going to bring those colors together like that. And then actually while I'm waiting for the wings to dry still, because that's gonna take a little bit of time, I'm just going to address the face area uh, where it would reflect some of that light from his blue sword. So the way that we do that, the way that I'm going to do it is like this. Now, again, you have this painted miniature and you're like, why are you going to ruin a painted miniature? And why do you take the chances? Because it's fun. Um, but yeah, you do run the chance of kind of messing up your miniature a little bit, but Nothing venture, nothing gained, right? Uh, blue ink, still got some wet in the palette. Take some blue ink and I'm gonna use that ink as my base for the object source lighting or OSL, which is basically like the reflected light. So this sort here would be emanating light onto his horn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put blue kind of along the front end of his horn and this ink will kind of color that area a little bit with that color. That's the intention is, is to kind of like set a base, a translucent base for where that color is going to sit. So I'm going to do it along his face here, his snout a little bit, even along his teeth like that. Cause it would be, and half his hair. I'm going to stop it right about there. Weird. I know, but that's what we're going to do. Um, I don't think I want to do it on his chest. That's a little far. I will do some top and bottom of his hand because it would be reflecting there. Um, like that. And I'm not going to do any on his wing yet because we're going to do that later. Basically, a side of his face like that. I could add a little, you know what, I'm going to add a little bit to his shoulder, kind of at the peak of his shoulder here, and maybe the peak of his, yeah, you know what, we're going to do the peak of his pec as well on this side. So just adding some blue ink to his chest. Again, I spent all this time painting this, and now we're messing it up, but all for hopefully a cool effect that we're going for here. Now, I don't want it to go too much into the recesses, just creating a base for it. And for some reason, my camera again is stuck. Apologies for that. You guys don't even know what I'm doing. I just have to keep resetting it here. Sorry, folks. Um, any plans to release unpainted PC minis for Into the Mist or Wild Mount? Oh, that's a good question. Um, not yet. Uh, maybe at some point, if things grow as big as we hope they do and people follow us as much as we do, maybe one day that'll happen. As of right now, not yet. Okay. 
Um, so again, we've got blue ink kind of drying on there. I'm just gonna let that go for a second. And then we're gonna start the process of, of highlighting that as if it were being caught. Now this is going to set some light and it's gonna kind of hit some of the areas around here, including kind of the edge of his wing, but we're gonna let that go. His wing is almost dry, so I am gonna go ahead now and start to highlight it. All I'm gonna do for a highlight is I'm gonna take my larger brush, I'm gonna get some bone white, mix that into my, into my somber gray and dry brush. Removing most of this. Korgek88 asks, I'm falling in love with Tides of Wildmount. Where did you get the shark abomination minis and how would you paint a great white shark? Um, good question. So I got those, those are Reaper minis. Um, they were in an old box that we did a long time ago too. Um, we featured those. Uh, and a great white mini, I did the same thing. Um, the, the paint scheme I used for those would be the same paint scheme I'd use for a great white which is basically like gray all over with a black wash. So I used heavy, heavy blue gray with a uh, black wash, uh, then came back with the heavy blue gray. And then I think it was wolf gray as a, as a highlight on top and then bone white on the, on the belly. Um, that's what I did there. So feel free to do the same if you like. And I'm just dry brushing a highlight onto these wings. I uh, don't want too much. Gonna get the edge. Make sure you get the edge of the wings. That's where it's really gonna show the texture. Uh, a little bit inside, but not too much. So I'm just gonna go along the edge here, along the spine, but I want it to be dark in that wing, like that. There we go. That's all I'm gonna do. I think that's plenty. Now, For this OSL, Object Source Lighting, which I think this ink is dry for the most part. Yeah, inks dry fairly quickly, quicker than washes do. Um, now I'm going to add increasingly thinner layers or thin layers of increasing brightness of the blues. So I'm going to take a watered down magic blue this is where it gets scary folks and i'm going to add that to the sides where this light would is he painting over his mini yes i am believe it or not i am painting blue over areas of this miniature which i've worked so hard to do this but i'm following the same sort of areas that I did same musculature as I did when I was painting this skin. Like that. What? I can't believe you're doing that. I know. Crazy, I know, but it is the only way that we're gonna get the results that we're looking for. I mean, this is my way. I'm sure other people have other ways. I'm gonna paint a little bit on top here, the bicep. That's kind of, in my opinion, where that blue would sit. I'm gonna paint it on the top of my hands here, down here. And again, this is a thinned version, a thinned layer of magic blue. Like that. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we did that. I know. Now I'm also going to use the edge of my brush. I'm also going to paint it into here. It's going to show up really nice on here and up along the inside of the wing as well. It's starker on the red. It's nicer, kind of more subtle on the blue, which is great. Okay. Then I'm going to mix some electric blue into that magic blue. Go 50-50, kind of like the same way that we did. Make it nice and thin. And I'm gonna do even smaller strokes there. This is a simple way to do this. Uh, it's not as subtle as maybe I'd like. Um, 
it takes a lot more time to kind of do a really subtle transition. But it'll get the effect that you want across. And this is, this is really like, this would be a heavy, heavy version of this. Uh, I'm going pretty heavy in the paint um, for, for this effect, as if it's a really bright, bright sword. Um, I'm also going to run the edge of my brush in a smaller area along the inside of that wing. That wing looks uh, super cool. That's kind of what I was looking for there. Then, using my zero brush, I'm going to go even smaller with pure electric blue. And now I'm focusing more in the center, smaller areas as I go, dots on this side. Remember where the light source is coming from. but it should get brighter and brighter as it gets to the center of these areas. So on the brow, I would just do the center there. On this, I would just do a line in the center of kind of the area that is being, that you're getting that from. And the hair, same thing. And as we get lighter and lighter, It'll kind of blend more and more. Here, again, smaller area. I'm not going to go as far down. And then into the center here. I've had a lot of people kind of mention object source lighting in our videos. Say, why would you ever ruin your miniature that way? It doesn't make sense, but I like it. It's a bit of a challenge. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I know it's a big gamble once you've kind of painted a miniature like this, but I kind of like it. Now, again, I'm gonna take some, now some watered down dead white right in the center where it really is gonna show. Now this dead white is really kind of the magic that occurs. And I'm just adding little dots at this point, little lines of dead white. On the hair, this is where I can kind of blend it into the rest of it, like that. See, I'm just doing little tiny lines of, of light. You can see kind of like and then also into here. Oh, I got some on the wing. That's not good. That came right off. Okay. And then also I didn't do pure electric in, on the wings yet, so I'm just going to do that, and I'm going to focus again on here. And then I might work it up a bit more for the dead white on the wings. But into here, and then again right on this edge, because that's the closest edge to that sword. And then pure dead white. Just a little line there and just dots in the
pretty intense. Um, in the end, I'll pro I might add a blue wash over some of this because I do, it is really delineated. Um, and there would be more blue kind of in the, in the recesses. So I may actually add, maybe not wash, but maybe like an ink into some of those areas. Um, in fact, I'll probably do that now as we go. Uh, I also you add some here to the under. I didn't realize that there was kind of like an under jaw, but basically you can at this point just kind of add more as you go uh, to make it work for you. Get some more blue ink because the blue ink in the palette is almost dry. It's getting gummy. And inks tend to come out a bit more um, glossy than washes do. But once I add that, once I add the, uh, once I varnish it with a matte varnish, the Vallejo matte varnish, it'll really It'll really bring it all together. And I'm just adding ink here. See, as, as I said before, I am adding tone to the area. So I'm toning the red to be more blue in the recesses because I'm finding that the red coming through in the recesses is a bit much. So, and just delineating some of these areas a bit more. There we go. And that's a pretty intense light coming from there, but I think it's okay. There we go. And then on the other side, it's not going to be, it's going to be a bit more subtle than this, but I'm going to use some water down red and I'm just going to add it to the inside of this wing edge here. Feather it with your finger there like that. And I'm also going to add a bit more red, kind of leading up the arm here a bit and these chains like that. And maybe a little bit here just to the edge of this spine coming out the back. You see there, just like that. Uh, and also to the leg, actually. I would have some as well here. The leg is already red and the edge of the boot and then I'd go in with orange fire uh, and with orange fire I'll do the same just come down here like this of highlight some of the area in here, center of the leg, sorry, and top of the boot, like that. There. I think that's good enough for the flame. Yeah, fire and ice almost on this on this guy. Oh, I think he's pretty much done, folks. I think he's done. Like I said, once this is really shiny right now because of the ink, but once we once we add that wash, I think it'll it'll look really nice. I'm gonna answer a couple questions here, and then we may call it a Wrap. Okay. Uh, Kipitari says the whip looks a little like a flaming Cheeto. <laughs> LOL. But that's what the fire is supposed to look like. Awesome. Uh, Crystal says, how will you keep from messing up the feet when you paint the base? Uh, careful. <laughs> Just be careful and run your, your brush along the edge. Oh, I've got uh, my phone on cam. That's not good. Um, can you do the same? Okay. Actually, you know what? I'll give you one last turn of the Baylor. A 
I like how that sword turned out. That worked out all right. All right. And then we are just going to switch views here just so we can go to a wide shot while I answer some more questions. We'll move this out of the way. All right. Let's see. Um, Trobe19 says, can you do the same painting effects with the lightning bolt from the young blue dragon? Interesting. Maybe. Um, if we get to that again, do you think you can finish the model today with the OSL or will there be an episode three? I'm done, Noah's minis. Uh, Lego, what's up, buddy? Uh, any timeline for those Vallejo tufts? Um, June, they said. June or July, so summer, early summer. Um, Kit Matari looking great, especially the lightning sword. The Vallejo brushes you use are synthetic. Yes, they are. What was the soap or conditioner you thought might help maintain the tips? It's called Master's Airbrush Soap, I believe. Uh, I'm going through these as quick as possible here. Uh, to get some funky effects on wings, I used an old toothbrush with very thin, light, dark ink, so they wash out slightly. That's nice, Edward. Good call. Corey C. Lund says, what are you using for the overhead camera? Is that an iPhone? <laughs> it is. It's an iPhone 7. Um, XJM says, uh, question, will you try kit bashing different WizKids minis? Never thought about it. I might do that. Oh, snap it snap says, what brushes are you using today? Those, these are all Vallejo brushes. Yes. Except for the larger brush it was a GW brush. Um, from the D and D chat, strange 1979, good year, uh, on pre-primed ready to paint minis. Is it recommended to do a base coat on the whole mini pre-primed regular ready to paint? No, I, I don't do a prime. Um, I, no, you don't have to do a base coat on the whole mini. I, I use base paints just cause. They go on nice and strong, and I like a strong base coat, but you don't have to base coat the whole mini. What if you are, uh, LF01 says, what if you overdo it with a light effect? Is it possible to reverse it? Not really. Uh, this is a really strong lighting effect, um, perhaps stronger than I typically do. I'll step away from it, and I'll come back and see what I think of it. Um, but um, no, it's not really possible to go back from that, unfortunately, um, really. But you can change the tone of it with washes, sub subdue it, paint over it a little bit. Um, I may touch up the hair a little bit in here and add some more white, but for the most part, I think it's done. I think it turned out all right. Um, Lego says, Jason's Beholder video helped me with some OSL on my Beholder last night. You're very welcome, Lego. And the last question for tonight, um, would uh, Emperor... 10 mil says, what well, would a red wash make that blue even more subtle, bringing back the true color of the devil? Just wondering because it looks cool with the blue effect on what it turned or would it turn purple? Good question. Uh, maybe a red wash would work. It would turn it a little purple, but a red wash maybe around the edges might help to blend it actually, um, which would help it to look, help it to look nice. Um, but, uh, but definitely, definitely worth a try. It's gonna be interesting to see how it turns out when I take some photos of it, but from here it looks cool. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. Been a wonderful night. Thank you for another awesome episode. 46 episodes, believe it or not, of Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials. You can catch the VODs on our YouTube channel and on the D&D uh, &D YouTube. We're a little slower on the, on the Realm Smith side. We're trying to catch up because uh, we've fallen a little bit behind, but it's all good uh, in the hood. Uh, again, tomorrow night, Tides of Retrib uh, Tides of Wildmount is our stream. Uh, the players are on the brink of death. Uh, they are um, fighting some Sahu again, and it's scary. So tune in to find out what happens there. Also, if you'd like to join the Revelry, you can subscribe on our Twitch, and that is your tithe to enter the Revelry every month. And you get all kinds of perks and fun things. You can check it out on our Discord. Um, and uh, Prometheus Bound and uh, Shadster will help you out there with all of your awesomeness that we are offering over the next little while, which we are super stinking excited about. Thank you for all the viewers tonight. Thank you for all your support. Um, and if you have any questions that weren't answered tonight, you can ask some of them in break tomorrow during the stream. And you can ask them on behind the screen on Monday night or Tuesday night. Although at 8 p.m. on Tuesday, we have uh, James Hake joining us, joining us for uh, behind the screen to answer some questions about writing Tide of Retribution for Explorer's Guide to Wildmount, which we're, um, which is an awesome book, and we are uh, obviously 
covering um, and using for our current Tides of Wild Mount campaign. Have a good one, guys. Have a good night. Be safe. And there's lots of uh, restrictions that are starting to lighten up here in Ontario, in Canada, uh, which means that we may be able to start playing around the table again safely uh, soon. Hope that's the case. Uh, apparently, there's supposed to be more news about that on Tuesday night. So have a good one, guys. Be safe. Bye.